This is a really nice problem. It was the final problem from this is AIMO, problem 10. And it's this, so we've got these five by seven rectangles um, placed on a, a large grid of unit squares. So you can use as many rectangles as you like and you can place them horizontally um, or vertically. We have to place them on the edges of the unit squares so they cover exactly 35 unit squares each. And the problem is to find the largest n for which it is not possible to cover exactly n unit squares. So for example, like with only one rectangle, obviously you just cover 35 unit squares. So if I put another one here, I could cover 70, but you know, if they overlap, then I'm only covering 65 or if they're only overlapping by one unit square like that, I want to find the largest n where it's not possible to cover n unit squares. So there's probably a few ways to think about it. Um, you know, one is to think about what, what could you not cover? What small numbers could you not cover? And the other way is to think about what can you cover? For me, I started thinking about, well, if I had two rectangles, what number of squares can I cover? So obviously I can cover 35. If I move this one spot to the right, I can cover 40, getting an extra five there. Again, another step to the right, 45, 50, uh, and so on, all the way up to 70. Well, what else could you do? Other logical thing then probably is just to move down by one step. Um, you can cover, that's another additional seven, so that's 42, 49, 56, etc., all the way up to 70. Um, I should say probably, you know, feel free to pause the video, have a go at the problem yourself if you like. I'll just put the problem up again here on the screen so you can pause it, have a go yourself, see what you come up with. Um, and then, well, what happens if I offset one right, one down like this? How many extra do I get? Well, I get an extra five here, but I don't quite get an extra seven because like there's an overlap here. So I actually get five plus six, an extra 11. That's covering 46, 35 plus 11 is 46 in total. Um, so 46, I go again across one and I'm only adding another four there because um, I'm sort of like, I would add five, but you know, these not added, there's just seven down there. So I'm really only adding four. So that gives me um, from 46 to 50, 54, 58, 62, 66, and then 70 again. And when I sort of got to this point, thinking about the problem, I thought, well, here's a good way to represent what we can cover. And that is by listing um, on these corners of the grid squares, the number that we cover, if we have two rectangles, uh, leave one where it is and just place the second one on this corner. So if here, for example, I cover 35, move over, I cover 40, 45, all the way to 70. Move down a row, get 42, um, as I said, 46, 50, and then going up by multiples of four, all the way to 70. Um, and then all these different numbers is what I can cover with only two rectangles, but I haven't rotated any of the rectangles yet. So I've just used these, these two horizontal rectangles. Um, so that's good, but then next, you can think about, well, what would happen if we did rotate a rectangle? So if I grab one of my vertical rectangles, um, and let's put it here, for example, as soon as I do that, I'm adding an extra 10, so I've covered 45. Um, still 45, still 45. Okay, so here, I've got an extra 10 plus an extra 5, so that is adding 15, that would be 50. Um, well, all those numbers I'd already covered before with my two horizontal rectangles. What if I go down and across one? Well, I'm just adding 15. That's just 50 again, maybe like over here for something a little bit different, maybe. Uh, and then I get the 15 down here and another four. That is 54, I think. But I already covered that one before as well. And then like what you would find if you keep doing this, all these numbers that I would get from, from this using this uh, vertical rectangle, I've actually already covered. And like when you think about it, what am I really doing here? I've got 35 plus 35, but I'm subtracting this little rectangle in here. So this is 35 plus 35 minus six, um, which is 64. Again, I've covered that before because even if I had my two horizontal rectangles, um, you know, I can still do 35 plus 35 minus six. So anything I can do with the horizontal uh, and a vertical, I could have already done with the two horizontals. So that's a reasonably good insight, sort of simplifies the problem a little bit because then at least for two rectangles, I don't have to worry about the vertical one. I can just think about the two horizontal ones. Uh, okay, so that's good. Um, so maybe if I return then to that grid we had from the two horizontal rectangles and what, what I noticed what was significant to me um, 
is the rows of consecutive integers. So if we look here, for example, we've got 65, 66, 67, all the way down to 70. And then in the second bottom row is 63, 64, all the way up to 70. So having those consecutive integers is really good because um, that allows me, like what I want to do is show that once I get past a certain point, I can actually cover all consecutive integers. So here from 65 onwards, I already get 65 up to 70. And then think about, well, how can I get 71 to 75? So this arrangement gave 66. And then if I just uh, take my horizontal rectangle and add one spot to the right, then I get 71. Um, similarly, if I want to get 72, I just take what I had for 67, again, add another five to get 72. So I can get 70 to 75. And I think you can see like in a similar way, I can get 75 to 80, 80, 85, all the way on. I can actually get all consecutive integers um, from 65 onwards. So that's actually really good because now we know that our n, our solution to this problem, uh, must be 64 or less. And in fact, if we look at the grid again, we can say we already had 60 um, up to 64. So it must be 59 uh, or less. Now, how can you make 59? You can make 59. Um, and the way I can do it was to take the arrangement that gave me 49, which was this one, and then just add 10. So again, like two steps to the right, that would give me 49 plus 10, that would be 59. All right, we're getting closer now, we've done 59. 58, we already had, I already had 58 above. So the solution uh, value of n now must be somewhere between 36 and 57. 57 actually we can get because um, we can get 42. We had 42 just by shifting this down one. So adding any multiple of five to that, 42, 47, 52, 57. Okay, so that's good. And maybe if we look now at the, the 46 we have, which is like a small number above 35, um, adding multiples of five to that 46, we can get 51 and 56. Okay, 55 obviously we can get because it's a multiple of five. Getting very close now. Perhaps it's time to start thinking about like what numbers we definitely can't get. And think about that, like coming back to the two rectangles again, um, if they're on top of each other, we have 35. As soon as you move one, one step to the right, you've already got 40. So it's not actually possible to get anything uh, between 36 and 40. So it's not possible to get 36, 37, 38, or 39. Because like no matter how many more rectangles I add, it's not possible like to take away from the area. I can only add. So it definitely is not possible to get 36, 37, 38, or 39. If I move down one, I add at least seven, giving 42. And if I move across and down, then I get 46. So not only is not possible to get anything less than 40, it's not possible to get 41, okay? Because again, if I move to the right, I've got at least 40. If I move down, I get at least 42. If I move down and to the right, I get at least 46. So if I move this, say, two steps to the right, I'm going to have at least 45. So if one rectangle is offset to the right by two, I must add at least 10. And same thing goes if I was to add the, uh, the vertical rectangle. As soon as I add a vertical rectangle, I must add at least 10. Like there's no way to add a vertical rectangle without adding at least 10 new squares. So the only things that I can get between 35 and 45 is 40. I can get 40, I can get 45, uh, I can get 42, and I can get 46. So that means it's not possible to get 41, it's not possible to get 43, and it's not possible to get 44. What about 48 or 53? I was not able to see how we could get either of those. Um, you can have a think about it yourself. You actually can get 48 and 53. Um, but to me, that was not obvious at all. I, did, I found a hard time seeing that. I have to look at the solutions. Um, but I wonder if you can you know, have a think about it, how it is possible to get 48. What we actually need to do, pause the video if you want to try it yourself, um, is to add one, two and three more rectangles giving a six by eight is 48.
Okay, so I don't know why I didn't think of that. So this is how we get 48. So then, you know, you could easily get 53 by adding another one, one step to the right, get 53. So you can get 48, you can get 53. You can get all consecutive integers larger than that, meaning the largest one you cannot get is 44. So a really nice intermediate math Olympiad problem. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, any comments, questions, corrections, leave them in the chat. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it.